I am very pleased that this month for our signal conversation, we have a very special guest. The legendary Faith Popcorn is joining us. Faith is CEO of Faith Popcorn's Brain Reserve, a future-focused trend consultancy, and she applies her renowned foresight to reposition established brands and create the products and services of tomorrow. She's a trusted advisor to the Fortune 500, including P&G, and the author of four best-selling books, including the legendary Popcorn Report. Her predictions have a documented 95% accuracy rate. And Faith, you may not know this, but I write predictions every single year and we feature them in Signal. Oh. And I think the best I've ever done is about 75%. So good on oh. you. Welcome. Well, I didn't give myself that number. I just want you to know. I mean, that was, you know, a lot of reporters, snarky people, various kinds, uh, actually check the predictions because everything I've said well, up until a while back, almost everything has been documented in some kind of, you know, either the books or something, and um, they they couldn't find that it was wrong. I mean, it's right, but and then you'll say to me, I'll just ask myself the questions and answer them for myself. Okay, then you'll say to me, uh, what hasn't happened, right? Well, that <clears throat> would be an interesting question. You know, what did you get wrong? Yeah. So my answer to that is what it just hasn't happened yet. So <laughs> I know the feeling. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I guess I, I think robotic companions, um, although I didn't put like a last year's date on it, but uh, you know, and um, what else? Like uh, the goodness trend, SOS, save our society, Things have not manifested in if I were running the world the way I would have had it come. But so far, right. we've not been like blatantly wrong. Yeah, well, and that that's one of the reasons that you have such a successful uh, career. Um, you recently presented to PNG, uh, and a lot of the people watching this uh, work at PNG, and you were focused on the future of the home. And I reviewed that presentation. Um, you ask the audience to imagine what sort of the big consumer population, uh, which of course, you know, all consumers are PNG's customers or potential customers, what that population might look like in, in what feels like the near future, 2040. Can you tell us a few things about what's going to be different, uh, in 2040? Yeah. First of all, we have to understand that the human lifespan is going to be around 120. So that would lead us to a whole bunch of other, you know, questions. By 2050, the um, U.S. population and the world's population, 68% of the world's population will live in urban areas. So the end of suburbia. And marriage mm -hmm. rates are dropping at a 48% rate to a 50 year low marriage is not working and we kind of knew that but the numbers are crashing and birth rates which is something that png really i mean great that they they're going to go from pampers to dependable depends but uh i think they have to do more thinking than that about the birth rates down uh 20 20 percent to 100 year low single households you know how we don't like to make anything small you know, in packaging and stuff, um, single households doubled to 60 to, um, doubled in six, the last 60 years, multi-generational households quadrupled since, um, let's say 71. So, you know, first family, second, family, and the whole household has changed what it means to be a family. So people are living with friends, grandparents, somebody else's grandparents, um, really a mixy kind of uh, environment that we are calling family. All of these issues do portend significant changes to the big markets that companies like P&G plan. Yeah. You mentioned uh, quite a bit in this presentation, uh, an issue that I know is a big issue for P&G that has to do with sustainability around water. Yep. Um, what are your predictions about what happens with water? Well, 
you know, I don't even know what to say about this because if it wasn't too late, we should probably be grabbing off our own water sources as people and companies. The other thing is being able to purify, you know, bad water turning, because when we say water, we're saying fresh water, right? You know, maybe turning yeah. bad water into good water. But 75% of the world faces drought, and we're already seeing it, right? By 2050, 2030, the global surface temperatures will rise above the Earth baseline temperature by 1.5 um, degrees Celsius. So it's getting, it's not your mm -hmm. imagination, it's getting hotter and drier. And seeing that PNGs, a lot of products like, you know, Tide and all, you know, they need, the washing machines still need water. Hopefully we'll have innovation there where they won't need them needing less maybe, and maybe they won't need any at all. Something between a washing machine and a dry cleaning machine. And the idea that you need water to make products. So that's the other point. And when I was looking through the, your presentation, another thing I noticed was sort of a, almost a sea change in how consumers interact with what the market calls consumables, right? CPG is, you know, consumer packaged goods. The package is critical, but you mentioned that maybe that needs to go away, the package itself, which seems to have pretty big implications for a whole market called CPG. Yeah, would it be CG then? But <laughs> <laughs> consumer goods. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so the demand for sustainable packaging is up 81%. It, it's going to be like the vitamin C and orange juice. I mean, we want sustainable packaging. We don't want to think about packaging. So, I mean, if it's packaging that we could serve for dinner, that would be great you know, something to reuse in a great way. 25% 20, of sustainable, eco-friendly uh, packaging is important to consumers when purchasing household cleaning products. 25% sustainability or more. I honestly think we're talking a lot about sustainability, but eventually we don't want to talk about it. We just want it to be there. It's like... Right, just built in. Yeah, exactly. Um, just the higher prices for packaging, energy, raw material. The costs are up 25 to 30%, at least in cosmetics alone. And we're passing that on to the consumer who's facing higher food, inflation, health care. What's irresistible sustainability? Sustainability that you don't even think about. You know, sustainability right. that, I don't know, just part of the, 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 the life. Yeah, exactly. Um, I think that that's a key off of uh, one of the pillars of PNG, which is irresistible superiority. But irresistible sustainability would be exactly. The, I guess that the brand the brand is more valuable because it's got sustainability built in, right? Yeah. I'm curious. Getting back to the consumer, and we've been talking about brands, right? And brands are the you know standard bearers of the CPG business, and those brands, you know are made very real by the packaging that they're on that box of Tide or that package of Pampers or whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. um, will there even be brands in the future? Do you see a future for brands? And if you do, what do brands need to do differently to keep a relationship with the consumer? What, what's the future of brands? Will brands be there in the future? I, I don't, think brands as we know them will be there in the future. I think what will replace brands are relationships. So this is how it would work. Take out Walmart or take out, you know, the, 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 the middle person between P and G and the consumer because home delivery was taking over rapidly. I think it's going to just grow and grow and grow and grow. So now we're left with the cons the the company P and G and the consumer. So without that middle person, where's the relationship? So what happens is people migrate to something cheaper, something hotter, something sexier. So I think we have to begin to think about 
and this faced the pharma companies too, um, when pharma companies had to start dealing with consumers, not just through doctors' interests. That's the whole pharma advertising and, and communication thing. How are we creating a relationship with a consumer now? How? Something, I mean, and will this lead to subscription products, which could be really nice? You, you don't sign up for Tide, you know, each quarter, each time, or, you know, with Amazon. You actually have a lifetime subscription. It's presented to you at a very decent price, and you get other benefits along with that. So maybe it pays for somebody's college education down the line. Yeah, and I know that PNG is 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 uh, piloting a number of these kinds of subscription services, but it's a difficult transition for a large business dependent on the big customers that it's had for decades, like Walmart or Kroger's or you know any of the retailers. Um, that's a difficult transition to go through, right? For who? Well, for, for everyone. I mean, if, if I'm Walmart and I hear that I'm just the middle person and I'm going away, I'm worried about that and trying to figure out how I add value. In yeah. It. And how does Walmart add value? Same answer, actually. You know, right. what happens? Well, we saw in COVID, let's say. You know, what happens when you can't go somewhere safely? Why, why do I love Walmart? Tell me, I'm this person, I've got three kids. Why do I love Walmart? I once remember we were consulting with one of those big ones and I think somebody up management said, oh, women love to socialize in the supermarket. He obviously never went to a supermarket because I mean, <laughs> I mean it was so condescending and so horrible. What's so great about Walmart? Yeah, I can buy something less expensive, yeah, I can, you know, I, I mean, I, and I hear people, go, I love supermarkets, interview those people. They're always people that go there for fun. They're not people that have to go there because they got to put, you know, dinner on the table and have a full-time job. And, you know, it's, so um, not to see home delivery as the future and not to think you have to really find something extraordinary to deliver to that consumer uh, is really sitting on your laurels and not wanting to see what's coming. Right. Good point. Uh, let me ask you, and I think we've touched on this already, but maybe you have some other thoughts on it. What does a company like P&G need to be worried about that's coming in the future? Well, we said water. That's one thing. Then um, as digital is coming. So, Let's say we have an opportunity. Let's say the world just gets harder, more difficult, colder and warmer and more fraught with violence. You know, more and more we're going to be living in these digital worlds like the metaverse without the Oculus. You know, the Oculus is uh -huh. what's right. in the way, right? So will we need our home to be that sparkling clean? Or will our homes get smaller as our... Um, ability to cross the digital threshold, get wider. You know, that's one thing that I would be thinking about, certainly. And how, how can products be more personalized? You know, I don't, I don't find personalization. This tide has this stuff in it, or this is brighter. This is, you know, this is that, I mean, really personalized, like Mrs. G, I know that you're, third daughter has this, you know, incredible allergy, like, you know, personalized. And this is a nightmare for a mass produced company that makes mass produced products, but it's really what people want. And then I would also worry, I, I have a brainstorming about the wildest things that could happen, even though, you know, people tend in brainstorms, but that can never happen. That can, no, we can't do that. No, that'll raise spread all that. Put that aside and say, what are all the things that could happen? And then say to yourself, suppose the competition comes up with that. Right. Good point. So, thank yeah. you. So I want to ask you one last question because we're, we're almost out of time. And this goes back to how we opened, which was your accuracy and predictions. There has to be maybe. And if there's not, I have a follow up question. Okay. Um, there has to be a trend or 
something that you that you missed or that you got wrong? Is there something over the past 30 or 40 years you're like, wow, I just didn't see that coming? And what did you learn from that if 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 in fact there was such a occurrence? I didn't see COVID coming. <laughs> and um I mean I did know about it the like maybe in November before the March hit, but um, but we've always advised co- companies like we repositioned Comcast on a, actually it turned out to be a COVID strategy to deliver everything home, education, medicine, security, all of it. They thought we were just brilliant when COVID hit. I mean, but actually we thought they should do that anyway, but maybe it would take longer. I've been saying that robots, companions, robots, robotization was coming. I've been talking about that for 30 years. It's coming slowly. I mean, or we're not talking about it, but robot replacement is going to be very big. And robotic companions, robotic um, nannies, uh, home care people, you know, when you think about homes, I mean, people are not gonna have to clean their homes. I mean, the little vacuum cleaner, you know, on the floor is just the little bell of that. Your house is gonna be cleaned by a, a robot, of course. And, and, and one that you could probably have a conversation with, thanks to all the generated, generative AI that has broken out in Absolutely. the last year. I mean, that's and, a big part of it. And that, and that lovely robot is going to greet you at the door and say, martini, and have your martini perfectly mixed. Your kids all in their PJs, everything going beautifully, dinner on the stove, everything ordered robotically because, I mean, that robot doesn't have to go to the supermarket. Come on. And then the other thing I'm a little surprised about is how quickly GPT-4 has arrived and how people are pouring out their souls to GPT-4, not realizing somebody's owning this information, but it's people, high tech people are asking for answers in various codes. Okay. You know, coders and load you know, normal people are asking for solutions to just about everything. Their personal yeah. lives, their sex lives, their family lives, careers, everything. It is an extraordinary new chapter and an ongoing story. Faith yeah. Popcorn, I want to just say thank you so much for joining us for a signal conversation and for all your work you've done with PNG. Uh, I love the I company. You- I, a beautiful, I just want to say a salute a beautiful American company. Gorgeous. I know global, but American. Yeah. Yeah. Well, again, thank you so much. And we'll do this again soon. Thank you. It was a pleasure, John. Lovely meeting you.